welcome to the daily webinar for my youtube viewers good morning to you and let's hope you enjoy these videos that i'm putting out there has been a few questions in youtube and uh, one person's take seem i answered him and he probably doesn't like the answer i don't know what the question was but hey you don't have to be angry with me i'll answer your question if i think it's a very good question or if it's an important question even if i think that the question is not that good but the question merits an answer which means it will bring out something for other traders keep asking if I said you might look like a trollish question, don't take it, don't take it personally. The worst thing I think I might have said that to the person that the question looks like it's a trolling and he said, oh, if I hurt your ego. Well, if you hurt, you felt hurt with your answer that you sent back to me. I am not. If you know me, I'm always in my trading room. You can ask my traders. There is no ego to that. Right? There is no ego to that. So where trading is concerned, I'm pretty transparent. I'm pretty open and, and you can see that, right? So let's go please ask your questions don't be shy if you like the videos help share them maybe some other traders are going to see them and if you would like to join us you may want to do that now you can do that anytime because we might be having a live course in june so if you want to catch up with that live live course you can join now start learning from the past recordings we have in the group all right once you get access to the group you'll have access to all the past videos including all the daily webinars and everything enough materials for you to for a lifetime for you to be here so since I'm talking about this, if you give me one more minute, I'll explain about the group because people keep asking me when you're doing a new course, when we can join your group. You don't have to wait for a new course to join the group. If you've made your mind to join it, and if you have the finance to join it, and if you really think you want to be a good trader, that is why you should want to join us. Because what we do in here is not similar to any other group you're going to find anywhere. Period. We have at least five live sessions daily. We have an amazing group of successful traders who would run the, the, the room anytime. At any time, they could go in, pick up the room, and start running. This room sometimes has seven, eight, nine, ten sessions. I am in four or five of them daily. That is why I keep saying five to seven, because I know of those that I am in and some that well, some of the other traders are running on a regular basis. But that doesn't mean that it cannot. It's open 24-7. At any one time you want to go into the trading room, invite others to join you from the group and continue to do something there. If you find that you have something interesting, just jump in the room and say, hey guys, you want to take a look at this? A few people will join you who are available. Since we are around the clock, the first session starts in Asian. I am never in the first session because it's always by my traders who are in Asian sessions. And then I will join them later, which is now. Then I will join them for London session. Then I will join them for if there's a lot of activities between London session or if there's a news event between London sessions. And then I'll join for New York session. And if there is an activity after New York session, I'll be there. Let's say there's an FOMC, I don't know, something coming up. FOMC normally is 10 p.m. my time. I'll be there for that session. If there's nothing, they will take over from there. And we do this every single day. We take the trades, we follow up with the trades, we say what we're doing with them, we manage them. So when you want to join the group, anytime. The earlier you do, the better. It's a one-time payment for live access. I don't think if I'm going to charge you per hour of how I, you know, the amount of time I spend in here, anyone can afford it. Ask a trader who is in group for five years. He's making money. You can ask a lot of them making money already in the group for five years if they think they have made they have got their money worth of it five years daily five sessions a day not counting the webinars and every other thing including one-on-one -on -one and q a and all of that that we do practice session so you really can't pay for it if it's a per hour thing i'm going to charge you or if i'm charging you per videos that you get or per sessions that i do you wouldn't be able to afford the course like somebody would say $300, five of my training videos, and that's all you get, right? Buy it and leave it. You take $300, you take the five videos, you go home, you learn nothing from it. And whatever you learn from it, you cannot implement because you don't have that person's psychology. You're not there to see it practically done. And you don't know how to follow up on it, right? You can't. You'll not, it will be a waste of time. I can do that every day if you want, because five videos a day is what I about, about do, right? But that will not make you a successful trader. The idea is to come into a trading room where you watch how we take the trade, watch what is the trade set up, where we're putting the stops, why we're putting the stops here, how we're managing the trades candle by candle as it moves. 
that would make you a successful trader. And that is what we do every day. So I hope this piece gets to everybody and they learn what this group is about. Let's go. So, uh, sorry, dollar index. Yep. We expected to come break the top. It broke the top again. I told you last week that this is going to be a consolidation. They'll probably go back up, break the top. And I still think they can go now. Let me just go back to the daily and remind you where we were in the daily. Right? So on the monthly, this is the biggest structure as a weekly monthly structure. We broke the top. So what happens now? By way of analysis theory, by the way we look at it, once you break that top, you have an impulse that is that qualifies to say it's completed because it broke the top. So what you have there is clearly an impulse, a correction, an impulse, a correction, and another impulse. Now, you know, when they break the top, they don't have to stop here. They can go this much more. So this can continue to go more to the upside. But you would always hear me say, anytime we break that top, we we'll start looking for sell setups. It does not mean that it ends there. And again, to the same guy on Bitcoin, let me just remind you, right? Because this guy in Bitcoin is, is all worked up. So I'm going to bring it back. And again, I said, we're in this consolidation. If you remember, we're looking at this pattern and I expect it to go back up. Now, did it go back up and break the top? No. Does that change it structurally? No, it hasn't. Again, let me remind you, it hasn't changed it structurally. Remember, I've been saying to you, I don't know whether this is the correction because it's not classical the way we looked at correction, period. If it's not that way, I will not fix it. I will wait for the chart to tell me what it's doing. We saw this here and I tell you, there's a good chance this is gonna turn, but you will have to wait for the setup to get it. There was no setup for a buy here. The first possible uh, chance that there might've been a setup would have been this. That didn't break out, it came down. So you don't have a setup now again, if I, were look, if I was looking for a sell, we would probably consider selling under the low or consider selling this. But I'm not looking for a sell in any of the cryptos. I don't think any of my traders are looking for a sell in the cryptos. And there's a good reason why we're not doing that because they're pretty much at the low point. If you take this cons consolidation into consideration, we're pretty much at the low point of it. And most of these cryptos are either investment or semi-investment, which means you, even if you do them spot, you want them to move quite a lot so that you can make money out of it, right? This is not the case where you buy and you sell today again. And if you're doing that, then the whole thing is different for you, right? My traders can do that as well. But what I'm showing you in these analysis is basically long-term. Now that we haven't breaking that up, would I consider this a consolidation? I'll have to get a confirmation of that. And that's one of the things you're going to learn in our thing, confirmation. So even if it breaks this low, it can break that low. It can come back like this stop exactly this point and go back somewhere there or anywhere in here, stop and come back to this low. Still go back there, come back here, go back there. And this will be the correction. So this is what you call complex pattern. That is why you need to learn it. It's not that simple as an impulse and a flag and that's it. It's the complexity of the structure that we're looking at. And every time we see something that changes from what we originally thought would be the pattern, all we have to say, is there another possibility? What are the other patterns we know? How would those patterns behave? How do they look? And if you don't understand it, if, and there are times when we see it, and this is not fitting into any of the possible patterns we know, it's not making sense. All you have to do is don't do it. Simple. So you can get yourself all worked up, or you can learn. Now, if you're selling Bitcoin, congratulations. I doubt you're doing it, but if you're selling, congratulations. Uh, the way you speak, it sounds like you own some Bitcoin from somewhere around six to something and you don't know what to do with it. So you're hoping that when I say it's gonna go up, it's gonna go up, right? Well, it will go up. That's a guarantee. The point is from which point will it go back up? Because this is a correction coming down. So all corrections end up with an impulse to the upside. When and how? That's the only thing we're trying to get. And that's what we're looking for here. We're looking for the when and how by waiting for a setup or a pattern that we know. Now it breaks the low. I'm still waiting to see what this is doing, what this is telling me that it's doing. Right? Just to tell you how complex patterns would can be. Let's come back to this. These were the simple ones. These are the simple common patterns that we see every time, most of the time, 90% of the time. 
right? So it's easy to tell you what, you know, it's easy to make forecasts. And here's the good thing about wave analysis. The whole idea of the theory is that if I see X, it should go into Y. And if X goes into Y, then I must get that trade. If X does not go into Y, then I'm not in the trade. I'm not in the Bitcoin sell, I'm not in the Bitcoin buy, right? If I'm looking for a trade, this is a trade I should get. See, the ones that work perfect, and if you look at all my webinars, like take, let's take all, take for last week, all the forecasts we made. You know how many of them went? Go back and check it for yourself. I can show you, but you can go back and check it for yourself. So if 80% of them go and you get, I don't know, you get 60% of those, and you don't even have to win all the 60% you get. What if you only win 50% of those that went? You will still make money. Because the other 50% that didn't go, that you got tagged, and we will close them for less than what you were risking. That's how we structure our, our trade management plan. So that if you were risking 1%, you would close them for less than half a percent, most of them. Or you will get break even on them. And the ones that actually go, the ones when we said it go, it means it went more than a percent of your target. So more than a percent of what you risk, right? So you risk 1%, you get more than 1%. Those are the ones we call that you win, they went. And that's how you make money. Because the one that go, you make money, and the one that doesn't go, you manage them so that you don't lose all that you are even risking. Very simple, not complex. And if you follow that, well, congratulations, you will learn to trade and you become successful. So let's go. Uh, we're looking for this to go up and this has nothing to do with ego. This has to do with you watching the chart. You put your ego in here and you will get yourself trouble. So we're going up. The question is how high would this go and where would we, if, we, if you're trying to buy this or trade this, what way would you, where, where would you trade? At this point, wait for a flag. Any flag would be a buy setup. Let's go, silver. See how simple it was? This was a sell, this was a sell. I would call this sell break even because we wouldn't keep it, right? So this would be a closed trade. We can look for a sell setup here again, which means if you get a flag here, there'll be a sell setup today. And I think we're getting a flag. We can go for another sell setup here. It's a trade we would manage. By trade management, you would close this trade. You would not keep it. So now we will look for this one. It, although it came back into profit, we will close it for break even. By rule, you should. And then re-enter the trade here. So it's for now a sell. Where do I think this is going to go? I think this will come break the low. That's what we were expecting it to do. Come break the low and then probably go back up. Well, from which point would it go back up again, right? Again, I don't think this is the top of that correction of the whole move up. This is a very, very sharp move up. I don't think this was all a correction and that is the top. Not that I've seen any pattern that looks like that. So what I'm thinking is we're still in the correction, although we broke the top, we're still in the correction. Right? And that means we're looking for a complete pattern where this is part of that pattern. See? So I think this is going to come break this low here. And there's a very high probability when we break this low, we might go back up to that top. Now, what if it breaks the low and continue to go down? Well, we remember we're selling, right? Unless we get a setup for buy, we will not be buying. So if there's a setup for sell, we'll continue to sell and then see how far that goes. Again, I don't think this is only correction. That's too small a correction. It's not that it's not corrected, but it's too small. It's too sharp. It's too small. This one that ended, that ended that structure is not sharp enough. And this coming down here is really, really slow. So we're still in the correction, put it that way. And that means watch this to break the low. And when it breaks the low, we'll see how far it goes after that. You're starting to get divergence, which is a good sign. Momentum is dying. By the time you break the low, you might turn and go up. We're looking for sell setup. Can this still consolidate more in, in this area? Well, it can. So if it tags you like this and start to go back up, we will close the trade again, right? We'll not let it get to the stop. We'll close that trade again. And if this becomes a bigger correction, we will sell it from the top again. Now, I'm not expecting a big consolidation because we already have one here. I'm expecting this to go down. Let's see if it does. <clears throat> Sorry. Let's go. Gold, same thing. Sell setup. Look for a flag. Sell it. You could have been in this trade earlier. We didn't take it because Friday when I left, it was still going up. It didn't break out or it was still here. We didn't break down. So any flag you get now, we'd look for it. It could come to this level slightly lower. 
this doesn't have to go much lower. It could go, but it doesn't have to go. We're looking for one, two, three, one, two, three, finish, and then go back up. Just like we told you when it was going up here, they will come back down and we showed you that pattern. That is what we're looking for. So let it drop some more. There's a sell set up there. And then we'll start to look for buys, which means once we break this low, any buy setup we get, we'll take it. We took that buy setup, which means we'll take any other buy setup. Let's go. Okay. City Magic works. Go back and track this one. Go back and track it. I showed you that move down. I showed you this move and I showed you this move. I want you to watch it when it was doing this move, what I said. I said, ignore this. Let it make the first pattern. One, two, three. Then it has to come down. If you manage to sell it, sell it. If you don't, then forget about it because sometimes you might not manage. There was no sell setup. Once it breaks this low, you start to look for the upside because the upside is this one, which means any consolidation. If my traders buy, they would have bought here. They probably could have closed it and rebuy it here. If not, wait for a consolidation here and buy it to break the top. Once we break that top, we'll be looking for sell setups. That means we are looking at a simple pattern. If this comes here, break this top and start to go down, we will sell. That's a simple pattern. Can it be more complex than that? Absolutely. If I'm going to go through all the complexity here today, it will probably take us about six hours to only look at all the complexity of how this could develop. And even one option where this becomes a flat and it goes up. We're not even going to go there. It's going to take us more than six hours to explain all of that. And I think by the time the first hour, you'll be totally confused. You'll have no idea what I'm talking about. But the minute I did this, I can tell you something, and this is when you know you know where. The minute I did this for upside, all my traders knew exactly what I said. I think all of them sitting and said, okay, I see what he's talking about. So if we see that possibility, we will know that that is what it's doing. And you probably looking at this said, I have no idea what the heck he's talking about there. That's the difference. That's the power of knowledge. Let's go. So we're expecting it to break this top and somewhere along here, turn to the downside. You can still buy this. Can it stay in this range? It can, but I doubt they will. It looks more likely. This looks like a really perfect pattern. I mean, very good pattern. So I think we might just continue to go up. If it's going to drop and become, if this piece is still going to become more complex than it is right now, which means they start to make another series of flat drop again, another series of flat drop again, and then do that, that's okay. We've seen this happen many, many times. That's not new to us. But every time you have a complete pattern like this, you would look for the buy. Remember the cryptos I'm showing you. You should buy them, exit them, buy them, exit them. Every time you buy an exit, you're exiting for positive and you can buy back lower. The same, the same investment you want, you reinvest, but now you've got more for the same money. And it will go back up, you can exit again, buy back again lower until you get the big move you're looking for and then you stay with it. Euro. Downside, I still think it's going to go down. The only thing I'm watching this with today is I don't like this sharp move up to the top here. It looks like a big expanding flat, but this is coming down really slow, which means there is a possibility it will continue to go slow, or we can end up with a much bigger corrective structure like this. Right? They come here and then it starts to go back up, making a really big structure and drop. What that means? That means every cell you take, you'll be cautioned. Right? What, what, the, what the chart is telling us from this way the structure is, is that now you have to be careful. The cell is not that simple as it looks. But if you get a cell set up, take it, which means if this end up being a cell set up here, and I would it have to be a very good one because you're very close to the low, I'll go for the cell. If this goes back up there, well, then that changes the cell setup. We'll have to relook at it and see whether we even want to buy it because this is not a buy setup. There isn't any really good buy setup here. The only good buy setup you'll get is if this actually breaks the low here, go back here, make a flag, then that makes a good buy setup. And it's not a fact that it doesn't just do this instead of doing that. See? So, but the best buy setups you're going to get is always the sell setups because potentially it's coming to break this low. Now it can go really slow. See this one, how slow this went? That is why we sold this and we sold this and we sold that. And you can see all the sell, right? We will repeat the same thing coming down here. If that's what it's doing. We'll sell. Pong. I think this one is amazing. This sell is off. That sell was we were selling for something else there. We're selling if this is going to drop. When it had all, this was the first sell. 
right? That was closed. And when you close that for break even or positive, you put the entry here, right? Now that is the entry should be off because the entry is there as if this is gonna drop immediately. In the case that they're doing this, that entry is off, which means that I expect this to literally come back here or work its way down a little more, do this, make a running flat and then drop. So if you're selling it now, you would have to wait for a flag, go back to the one or wait for a flag, wait for this. If my, if my traders were there, they could have sold that, that would make sense. But if you get this and you take this down, then wait for, expect a sharp move up and a drop. Some point there'll be a sharp move up and a drop, right? Let, let me just show you that. So that if there's a new trader watching who has no idea, you get this, you get this, come back to the low, you get a sharp move up and then the drop. You get this, it comes back to the low, you get a sharp move up. In this case, it doesn't have to break the top because we broke the low, that's a running flat, make that and then drop. See, that's it. So we can trade it, but we just have to be aware. This is a small one, you can trade it. You have to be aware of where you're gonna put your stops and how you're gonna manage the trade. We're still looking for sales because this one potentially could drop quite a lot. One of the reasons we're so focused on this is that this could come and break this low, which is much more than the Euro because this one is still about, I think about seven plus hundred pips to break the low. The Euro is only 200 pips. I think the Euro is even less than 200 pips now. Uh, yeah, 108, it was 200 last week. So 180 to break the low. That doesn't mean that Euro cannot go a thousand pips. It just means to break the low, the bare minimum to, for the pattern to be you know, considered complete is that much. It can still go a thousand pips and Punk can still go a thousand pips. So we're selling, look for sell setups. Let's go, Aussie. Aussie made a big one. This was a sell setup for us. That is a trade you can take and keep. That trade, if you close it Friday for profit, that's great. Wait for another flag. Aussie doesn't have to go quite a lot. It doesn't mean it can't go quite a lot. It, must, it means there isn't a requirement for it to go quite a lot, just break the slope. But it can break the low and go pretty low, right? It means it can go, you can break the low and make a consolidation and drop and drop and drop before you go back. So we'll keep trading it. We'll see how it develops, right? How this pattern develops. It's correcting the bigger impulse you have to the upside. And then we're going to continue to go up. So we know that Euro will break the low turn. We know that dollar index should break the top turn. We know Pong will break the low turn. We know Aussie will break the low turn. There's one common word there. They're all going to turn at some point because there are this, these extreme levels where they're completing patterns. Is it going to be a turn this month? Maybe next month? It doesn't matter. If you're aware of it, you will know how to take advantage of it. That's the most important thing, right? New Zealand broke out of the low. So this one was up to my traders to make the call because it's a very nice flag, but we are at the bottom. So I leave it open to them. I would say, I told them sell the Aussie instead of this if you're not sure, but if you're pretty sure you can do it, take this as well. We broke out of this structure. That by itself does not mean anything, right? Just breaking out of the structure doesn't mean anything. This can drop quite a lot and then go back up. Now, if, you're, if we're open to the idea that this is a slow move down and this is some kind of a running flat, just so that you know, I'm giving you that idea now because we looked at it like a thousand times before. Since this one went up, we started looking at that possibility. We said, let's see how this one starts to behave. And then this one started to really go slow. So that was more confidence of the upside. But because it's picking up here, you can end up with a slow start and a fast move back to break this low. Then go back up. That possibility exists, but I think it's very unlikely, right? Now, based on the fact that this came down so, right, like one, two, three, you had another one here and you drop. I think that should be enough for us to go back up, right? Because remember this one, you're looking at this. If we're comparing this one with this one, it's slightly bigger than that. But look at the drop here. I want you to see the drop here after we broke out. So if you, if you were trying to trade this to the upside and I was telling you or whatever you were telling yourself that look i like this thing here let it come back to the lower then i'll go it actually well you put it there it actually didn't break out it came exactly to about the low of this the pattern and then start to go up right it went up slow but it started to go up from there this one actually is making an attempt to break out now let's see how far it goes but there's a high probability that those two are very similar and we're going to go up right so i'll take this off and let's see how that behaves right 
it doesn't matter. At the moment, for, for trading purposes, you're selling. For analytical purposes, you're selling with caution, which means you know that this could be the very final drop before it reverses. So if you're taking the trade, you should be at break even. Okay, right? let's go. Any flag here is a perfect sell setup. Any reversal with a flag is a perfect buy. Let's see which one it gives us this week, right? Swiss, still going up, still a little confusing if you want to know. This is one of the confusing ones. Pretty sharp move up. It's going really fast. We don't have any divergence anymore, so that is gone. And that doesn't mean anything except that there is momentum in it. We're in this bigger structure. And this by itself is not giving us any clue as to what it's doing. I can't say we can make an assumption of what we're doing based on this. Nope, we can't. That's not a pattern that makes sense to us. We're just putting it to see if there's anything there that we might look at. This makes sense to us, but it will only make sense if this completes itself by pulling back here and then going back up, completing this running flat pattern. Now we have to wait to see whether that happens, right? Because this move up is really sharp. We were anticipating an up move, but after you've got a complete pattern here, and I still don't see where you make a contract. Of that. The only thing would make this pattern complete here is if somewhere in here, you can put it inside, you can pinpoint it said, I think this is a contracting flat, right? If you can pinpoint this and said, that's a contracting flat, then be, the reason I'm putting it with this one is because this is where the sharp moves start, right? Like this move then that makes sense. Now, I was not looking at that as a contract. Now, there are many reasons why I'm not looking at it as a contract. But it's not that, for, for example, it's too short in, compared to, in comparison to this. That's the first reason, like really too sharp. Even contracting flats would have probably come somewhere here and then go back up. I would have definitely go with a contracting flat if we had that. But because it's so short, I'm not inclined to put it as a contracting flat. So the only thing we would do now is wait you don't have to trade this pair, not even buy it. That's okay, there are enough pairs to trade. Buy CAT, for example, right? Because we know CAT is gonna go up. By the way, I did a, a, a webinar on CAT a couple months back, I think about a month back when I was showing you that because we have almost a complete pattern in this one, right? This one, two, three, which we thought was a contracting flat and that's always the problem of making forecasts. That when this breaks out, we're gonna go up quite a lot, right? Now, from that point, we've already changed. If you're following me, you would know that once this started to develop like this, we are like, okay, this is a bigger flat to come back here, break this low, go back up, break this top, come back down, make this one down, and then continue to go up. So that's the next big pattern that I see developing, right? Let's go back to it and see what it's doing. So I hope it doesn't become like the Swiss, which is an incomplete pattern taking off by itself, right? Again, I think this is the bigger flat in the middle. So we have one, two, three, which leaves this open. Now, I don't think this is part of the up move because I believe that is high enough. That broke the top. So we'll go with this as a one, two, three, whereby this has to come back here to complete this flat, then go. But this is CAD. Any buy setup you get, you'll take it. We will not skip any flag. We will take all the flags. Even when we break the top, if we get another flag, we'll buy it. Because if this continues to go up a lot, we'll keep trading it. We'll see. Remember this one. If you're here, for example, and you were looking at this, there is a good chance that when you finish this, this could have come back here. But then instead of coming here, they made a bigger flat and went up. Well, if this at any point here starts to make another flat to go up, we'll still continue to trade it. Right, whether we put this as part of this one or not, we'll see. But I think it's not part of that. So I expect this to probably, and the way it's going up means it might be a bigger correction. It might not be the big move to the upside. The big move to the upside would have probably gone already. So we might get a correction that is similar to this one. If you're looking at this correction here, we're gonna get something similar to that. So this probably break the top, come back here, break the top again, and then drop like this. I think we could get something like that, similar to this, drop here, break the low again, and then go back. Up. So you will get one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then go back up from there. The way it's going up now, that is the most likely scenario that I see develop. Now I would do an update on this so that you could see what I'm showing you. 
and we'll see where we go from there. As it changes, if it changes, we will change that. And that's the difference with the wave analysis, the way I looked at it. And most of anything you see with wave analysis out there is how I looked at it, right? People copying the way I looked at it. Some of them are even in my group and probably reselling it to you because you, you believe that's their idea, but they're just getting it from here. It's different from Elliott Wave. If somebody's doing Elliott Wave, that's okay. That's their problem with the counting and all of that. If they're doing wave analysis the way I do it, they're getting it from me. There's no other source for it. I am the source, right? So the way we looked at it is we don't determine the, the, the structure. We let the structure do what it's doing and then we follow it to see if we could understand what it's doing and how we take advantage of it. And that's a whole different story. So we're looking at it from here. This is here and you're going up. We're gonna break the top. That's absolutely, and if, if and when it breaks the top, we get more flags, we'll continue to buy. Every cell set up after that is a must. We will take them. But every buy set up will be like the last impulse to the upside for us. Yen broke the top. It's still going. It's still going up. This was a buy here, by the way, to go up to there. It was an early buy before the breakout. It broke out. So you probably put it here if you want. If you took that one, wait for another flag. We'll buy again. Now, yen, you have to be very, very careful. It doesn't mean it can't continue to go. It means we're making a weekly running flat, right? So I don't know if yen, Swiss, and CAD would end up doing the same thing, making weekly running flats, right? We know Swiss is taking off. We know that it's likely going to come back down, and we know this is going to come back down. This doesn't have a lot to come back down to because all it needs to do is do something like this, right? because you have one, two, three, do something like this and then continue to go up, which is what we think Swiss is going to do. Very similar. So the only one that leads to take off a little more and then come back down to make it a running flat would be the CAD. So let's see if that happens. Let's go. Go back to the one hour. Any buy setup you get, you take it. Any sell setup you get, we will take it. You're in New Zealand. Going up, so you should buy. Don't skip any buy in the Euro New Zealand. I hope my traders are in this trade and we will try to keep it for long term. We'll probably look for another flag, buy and keep it, try to keep this for long term because this could end up being the low of the structure. Once we got that running flat, we decided that could probably be the low. And if that is the low, you want to get into a trade here because potentially this could go up quite a lot. Potentially this one could end up coming back to the top here. It's already moving really fast, right? Remember this first one when we tried to buy this one? Not tried to. We bought a number of trades in that one going up there. We thought that is the one that could go. No problem. Once we figure out that it's a running flat and a drop, we're going to go with this one. Is this the one that is going to go? It doesn't matter. One of them is going to go. So you start trading any one you get. All buy setups should be taken. So you definitely want to trade this to the upside. It could be about 100 trades from here to the top, maybe 50 excellent trades. So that those that will give you two to one, three to one, 50 that might be breaking or small losses. But we will take every buy setup we get. As of now, every buy setup is a trade. Your account would be the same thing. No, this is probably going to come back down. If you bought this, you close it. You can see it still have breaking. So close the trade. There's a good chance this could be some kind of a flat. Not necessarily, but we'll see what happens. If they consolidate longer there, we'll look for a buy. If it starts to come down, we'll look for a sell. Looks like it can drop one more. I feel that they might drop one more. What is this flag looking like? Starting to look like a sell setup if you end up consolidating here. If this end up consolidating in this range, it could be a sell, but I'll be cautious with it because of the slowness of this piece here. So we'll see. Right now, you don't have a buy set up, but you don't have a seller set too. Euro Swiss. Okay, you might be getting a sell set up here. Even if it's short term, this could be a sell set up because we didn't go back to the top. So this could be a good sell. If they break through to the low, that's a sell. At least for one more drop, even like this. Let's say we're still doing this, right? They're still dropping, going back up, dropping, going back up. You still can get that trade. So that's a good sell setup. I think we should put an entry order here. We'll only change the entry. We'll only take off the entry if it goes higher. Right? So the entry for the sell is valid. But if this goes higher to the top here, then we take off the entry and we wait for it to come back and then look for the buy. So 
what's the bigger position was the bigger trade yeah it needs to come down back somewhat i think we could come back and even do one of this right because i, I explained this one last week already when you start to get him looking like this you could end up getting this as well here and then go back up this would be a nice running flat so the cell is a good idea even if the cell comes here and go back up it's still a good idea if it comes like this and go back up it's a good idea right so we'll figure out the patterns later which one is a pattern but i would i would trade this down there's a good possibility that it's going to come down and that's a good trade right now we'll go with this trade we'll watch it at this level here we want to break through that level but that's where you start watching it it's a good risk to reward trade in any case your laws okay we i expect it to go back up but not that much which is changing everything a little here now right because it went up much more than we expected to go back up now if we break this stop that will change everything because then we'd have to come back and look at this as a possible contracting flat this smaller one in here that have to be and this would be only correction right that would be only correction and this is going back up i don't like the idea of that contracting flat so i was looking for whether this could be an expanding flat to the downside for any trade setups here now we'd have to wait for this to make not a flag but a flat you need a bigger correction here before you buy because you're close to the top for a sell any drop on a flag would be a sell so now we have to wait to see which one it is but better to trade something else you don't necessarily have to trade this you could trade euro swiss for example euro yen yeah, it's coming back down but it's not the end of it this is going to come back here probably like this make a bigger flat here and go back up there then drop right that's one option you can go with that one two three and then probably even make a new high depending on how high they go back up, right the other one is well what if there's a contracting flat in this i think we looked at that opportunity that possibility last week what if there's a contracting flat this is the top and we're going down totally that means we have to wait it we have to wait the decision to take the trade or not, depending on whether you have risk to reward in it, right? The way this is coming down, it's not a sell. I'll ignore it totally. But if at any point here, we make a flag like this, we'd assume that they were just gonna break the low. So we'll take the trade and once it comes to this level, we'll put it to break even. And if it keeps going, that's the trade. But if it stops here and go back up, not only would we get rid of that trade, we'll see if we get a buy set up here to go, somewhere in here to go. So it, unless you get that flag, we don't have a flag area yet for that. Europan, you might get a sell set up here. I actually like the idea. If this has to go back down somewhat. So that's a good sell setup. Go for it. Put an entry, actually. We'll only take it off if it goes higher. Pound Swiss. Okay, this one is going back up, take that out. We didn't break the low, so it's not a turn to the upside. It could be that they're making one, two, three. More complex pattern before it drops. I don't like the sell where it is right now. So we will, I don't like the buy where it is right now. It's getting a buy set up here. I just don't like that buy, so we stay out of it. Don't trade this as yet. We'll come back to that. Pause. Okay. So this went up exactly like we expected it to do. That is because I saw this. I think, well, they're going to go back up one more. Can it go a little higher? Yes. Should we buy it? Well, not at this point. It has to come somewhere here, really make a bigger flat before I decide to buy, because from that point, we're expecting it to come back down. And we don't have a buy or a sell setup. See, pretty easy. Bang in. This should go back up. We're looking for a buy setup here, which could have been a small loss. You should close the trade for a small loss. Don't keep it, even if, even if we think it's going to go back up. Right? So if you got tagged in there, you should close it here. Stop should be here. Right? Now, this is consolidating. That looks more like a sell, but we don't have a sell setup here. Right? There is no sell setup in this yet. Because even if you come back here, it will be more like a one, two, three. You'll have to go back up there to finish this one. 
and then you get a drop. That is only this piece. We'll get that drop. Then we'll consider whether this is a one, two, three for another one, two, three up. And then we get a drop. So I don't see a good cell set up here. Probably stay away from this in terms of the cell. And on the bigger structure, we're still expecting it to go back up because we didn't break the top. And this is not a contracting flat. This looks very much like a small flat and so on. And this looks like a bigger running flat. So let's wait. Pankat, okay, they didn't drop lower, take this off. If it's making a buy, can we buy it from here? I think we can, we broke the low and we're anticipating that this could go back up from here. So if that is a buy setup, we'll take the trade, go back to the one hour. It's not consolidating as yet. We can put an entry there. If there's a small flag forming in there and it takes off, we'll take, remember this didn't break the low. And that's something we spoke of last week, right? That if we didn't break the low, could it be that they're going up? Well, I said, let it break the top and consolidate. So if it consolidates here, we start buying. If it is going to drop somewhere along here, we'll find a flag and we'll sell it. Found New Zealand. Okay. There was a buy set up here. And this piece, I don't know if anybody took that trade. Wait for another flag. We'll take a trade to break this top. I think it's likely going to go break that up. And then when we look at the whole structure when it breaks that up, because you will probably be looking at a bigger flat forming here. All right, this would be more like a one, two, three there. And this here would probably, because this is sharp and that is sharp. So we might end up with a bigger flat. But if we get a flag, it will take the trade to the upside. Any cell setup would have to be in the break of this structure. Right, it doesn't, that's not happening as yet. Aussie N. Okay, so we came down as expected because we had this. Now, the only question you're going to ask here now on the Aussie N is can we take this to be all the correction? Can we take this piece here to be all the correction? Because this has a three wave structure inside. Or is it going to go back up, make one more, and then drop, completing this one? That's the only question, right? So let's come back to the one hour. You can make an argument. Like I said, this one does have a lot of corrections in it, and I think it was more like this because there was a correction there, a final move here, and then you went up like that. So can we look at this as the flat? If that's all the flat, any flag here would be a sell. Any reversal here would be a buy to break the top and then drop. So you can go back. You'll probably have to find that in the 15. You're not going to get it in the one hour. Or probably wait for the one hour. So that was a perfect sell. Wait for this one over here. And if we get a one hour here, then we'll look for a sell. And if we get a one hour flag, we'll take we we'll look for a sell there. Aussie Swiss. You would have closed that. Probably enter here, close it, enter here. Right? So it's going down nicely. Good sell setup. Perfect. Let's see what happens now. Aussie New Zealand. Stay away from that. I still think it's more upside than downside. Aussie cat. Okay, this is coming down where we are. We're coming to break the low. Let's see where that low is. Okay, this might not be that running flat then because we're coming to break the low here again. This is too sharp to be by itself. I don't know. Maybe we'll have to put it in something else. Let's see what the bigger picture of this is. This was a nice breakout too. So I don't see why it's coming back this much. If it comes back that much, it means we'll be getting a much bigger pattern somewhere in here, right? If it comes that deep, then there will be a bigger pattern somewhere. I'll just let it break this low and see what happens, right? No, if you're in a cell already, good. If you're not in the cell, don't do anything. I think this is the one we're looking for a possible drop to break this low. If you're in the cell, good. If you're not, then don't jump in. Wait until we break the loan, see what happens on there. Any correction after that will be sell only. New Zealand Swiss. This was a sell. This probably would have been a break even here because it didn't go. Take that off. I don't think we put this on here. That was Friday afternoon. So take that out. Wait for a flag. It makes a flag, we'll get a trade. If they don't make a flag, they'll go back up from this point. We don't have any buy setup. But any flag here would be a sell, right? Any one or flag here would be a sell setup. New Zealand cat. 
this should have been a good one. It did, but this is a sharp move. So this belongs to that piece. This is not, this is a separate correction of its own here, right? And it's a pretty risky trade because we're at the bottom. We're at the very, very bottom of the structure, right? Remember that, the daily structure. So I probably wouldn't take that trade. We'll wait until we break out of the structure and consolidate. This is the daily structure. Okay. So if I'm going to take a trade here, it has to first make a correction like this, and then we'll sell. Because at this point, selling means they just tag you and reverse it any time. If you have a very, very good one hour flag, then you can sell it, put it to break even. Right? If you're not in that trade, wait for the next flag. If they reverse, we'll go for the buy. New Zealand yen. Okay, so we'll have to consider whether this is a contracting flag. If that's a contracting flag, this was a sell. If not, wait for any flag, then we'll sell. What is this line here? Let's see where that came from. Oh, that's this top. That has nothing to do with it. Take that off. That's showing the break of the top. Okay, if this is a weekly top, then that's a good sell setup forming there if it can come lower, right? Question whether we look at that as a weekly top. Let's go back to the one hour. If that's the case and this is trying to go up, any flag we get, we need to sell. Any flag here would be a sell setup. Guardian? You're getting a sell setup here, actually. You could put an entry here to sell. We had it here with us. Let's put an entry here for a sell. Once it breaks this low, once we get a drop like this, if it does this, put it to positive because they can go back up or they'll just continue to drop. We didn't break that up, but we'll see where we fit it in. Right? You're looking for a sell and then we'll see where we put that. I don't think this is the top. I think we will come here and go back up. So let's see. Cat Swiss? Probably get another buy set up here. It's coming back. They'll probably drop a little here more. In the, in the lower picture, they'll drop some more first. So you can put this like this, and you have a cell set up here first. There's a good chance this one will drop first, make a new low, and then go. But put the entry order to buy here. That's a correction. So even if it drops one more, we're still looking for a buy setup. And let's go Swiss here. Okay, this one is not going as yet. It's still consolidating and it's breaking the low. So you're still consolidating more, more downwards. We'll wait until they break this low and then we'll look for this straight to the upside and then downside, right? You're looking for something like that. And then the downside. So if it starts to go up from this point, we'll, we'll make an assumption. I think they're going up from that. They'll drop a little lower. And we're looking for something like this. So let this drop slightly lower, and then we're looking for that trade to the upside. Once it drops lower, we can move the entry order to buy lower. Okay. And Chinese one, let's see. Well, if you bought this, you're doing well. Any flag you can buy. Wait for another flag, buy. Right. Looks like this is all the correction you're going to get. We can go with it. We can go with that as all the correction. Wait this one where, wait for another flag, buy again. Okay, guys, I think we've completed that. If any of my YouTube trades managed to stay all the way to the end, you probably would have learned something that might help you. And if not, I don't know, we'll see. But share them if you can. Part two will be out soon. Thank you very much. Bye.